Hi, Story Wilson here. I'm going to give you a video update on the progress of the Rover Allcoms project. Uh, start with the hardware. This is the completed hardware design that I've been planning for the Rover Allcoms project. This is what the final product will look like. This is the actual case, the actual color, and the cable. This is the entire package that will be sold, hopefully in first quarter of 2011. Uh, what this is, is you have a USB connector and an OBD2 port. It'll allow you to connect any PC to your vehicle OBD2 port. Uh, there's a USB bridge chip in here. There's some LED signaling. That USB bridge chip, the signal is split, split out uh, with a, a, uh, an analog switching transceiver. allow you to switch to three different vehicle protocols. And it'll all be handled in the software. And hopefully now I can sit down and go over the software. Welcome back. We're looking at a desktop video recording of the software that I've been developing for the Rover Allcoms project. You just saw the hardware that I've developed. And now you'll see some of the software that I've spent hundreds of hours developing, tens of thousands of lines of code developing. It's still very rough, but I figure a lot of people out there want to see what I've been up to and what the status of the software is. So. Software is opened up. You're greeted with the license agreement here. You, once you click on that you accept the terms, then you'll see a series of tabs appear, each tab for a different vehicle. You'll also see a debug window, and the debug window just kind of shows some of the background operations that are firing in the background. Um, down at the very bottom you have the USB status, which is active, which means that the USB device that I just showed you is plugged in. Here's the device ID, it's queried. Uh, here's its unique, unique identifier. And here are some signaling uh, boxes that we'll see later, you know, for op comms that are open, transmit, receive, linked, and error. Um, so if we're going to run some tests here, actually communicate with the vehicle, uh, we're just going to go through some of these things real quick. I'm going to open the connection to the USB device. Uh, good. I am going to set the uh, channel to the uh, L322. And of course, everything you're seeing right now will be automated in the background when the full release is complete. This is just so that I can manually trigger some of these events. Now, a normal user would then go into the Mark III Range Rover. Looking here, we just do a drop down. We have read faults, change settings, notes, so forth. Read faults. Here are all the subsystems that we can read faults on. Click on the analog brake system. Here is the analog brake system module. I'm still working on some of the layout, so forgive me. But this is kind of basically what it'll look like. Here's the headlight leveling system, air suspension unit, you know, the engine control module. Analog brake system is what we're working on right now. Um, there's going to be basically four steps involved in any kind of reading of the faults open, read faults, clear faults, and then close. So we're going to hit the open, it'll initiate communications. All right, we have open comms, transmit and receive is firing. Uh, if we go to the debug window, we'll see there's lots of stuff going on. Here's our transmit record here. It's idling right now, and here's some of the receive buffer coming in. Got a couple little problems we need to figure out here. We've got an index out of range. Um, you know, then we can read the faults, and then clear the faults, and close. Done. Now we can go back here, and we can see kind of the, some of the... Some of the uh, traffic that's been going back and forth uh, outgoing and this is incoming um, so what you're seeing right now may not seem like a lot but it actually represents a tremendous amount of work because what we've got here um, is I've got all the fault codes in the system I've got the communication engine built the communication engine is what fires off when I say open read faults clear faults and close so all that's running in the background all of the threading is in the background handling all those requests independent of the user interface so you know I can I can tell it to you know initiate communications and I can still move around and it's still going on in the background here which is a tremendous amount of programming involved in the background to make sure that everything that the user interface stays functional while everything in the background is running so the big piece that I'm missing right now which is actually a small piece, but it requires some work. I basically I need to link these responses that I'm getting back in the receive buffer. I basically need to link these responses to the database of fault codes that is in the software, and so the fault codes will show up down here in this gray box. Uh, we could actually look at the fault codes that are all the possible fault codes. So I can show all the potential fault codes. So these are all the potential fault codes listed for this 
module. Uh, like I said, all I need to do is simply link up the traffic that I'm getting back from the AVS module and link it to the proper fault code in here, which is just a you know few more hundred lines of code probably. I can hide the fault codes. Uh, but yeah, you can show all the fault codes. It's kind of cool. You can see all the different fault codes for the different uh, vehicle systems just as a an academic tool there. Uh, you'll also be able to print and then uh, clear this buffer here. So you'll be able to print the fault codes and clear the, clear the buffer so you can clear it for reading more faults. This is a quick overview. Hopefully you uh, now understand what I've been dealing with as far as the... Um, the difficulty and the extent of what I've been trying to accomplish here. And again, I hope to have this ready in February of 2011. We're really close. I got my manufacturer lined up. Everything's ready to go as far as the hardware is concerned. You know, the boards have been manufactured. The enclosures are on order. The manufacturer set up. You know, he's ready to go. I just have to finish the software and polish it up a bit. So please feel free to send me your comments, and hopefully they're positive comments. And uh, keep checking back for more information at www.rswsolutions.com. Thank you.